Hey there, folks. So, I've got yet another new product coming out. Uh, this is the Game Boy Color USB-C Charging Kit Pro from uh, Giltessa here. Uh, I have done a pretty similar video previously on an older iteration of this thing, uh, but there's an update. Let's check it out. Uh, so here is what it comes with. You get the board, you get some wire, you get a little LED with the legs cut off that is intended to serve as a diffuser. Uh, and this wire is, um, it is three strands uh, that you will have to cut and strip to connect up the LED module. Uh, and there's also a battery connector. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if these things are coming with batteries or if they're intended to come with batteries, or maybe even depending on where you get it, it might not come with a battery. But in this particular case, mine did come with a battery and it already has the connector on it, so I won't need that. Um, I'm fairly certain if you order one of these from Retro Game Repair Shop, when they get stocked, it will be coming with a battery, hence the uh, RGRS logo on there. Um, if there are any other stores that stock these, I think uh, Retro Modding is gonna carry them as well. I don't think they will come with a battery. At the very least, if they come with a battery, it will be a different battery. Um, this battery, pretty standard size cell, 103048. I believe it is the same one. Yeah, it's the same one I used in the previous iteration of this mod. Uh, so, what's new with this iteration of this mod? Uh, Gilt Giltessa has made a few smaller changes to the uh, charging module itself, but he's also added on two additional functions to this thing. So instead of just being a battery charger, it is also a boost converter, which means it can replace the little DC-DC board on the uh, front of your Game Boy Color there, this guy. Uh, but it is also an audio amplifier, so you'll have louder speakers. Um, if you are installing one of these in your Game Boy Color and you are still on the stock speaker, you're going to want to replace that because the stock speakers aren't, they don't, they don't handle being amplified very well. Um, but otherwise, it looks pretty straightforward to install, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to cheat a little bit because I remember how much I struggled with getting the mod to fit in this Game Boy Color and I don't want to have to do that again. So I'm just going to shuck this Game Boy Color out of here and uh, reuse this shell, but we'll be using this Game Boy Color just so you see what a fresh install looks like. Um, and for context, this was a fully working Game Boy Color, or at least it worked when I last assembled it. Uh, so if for some reason it doesn't work after we put stuff together, at least it was tested beforehand, you know? Um, anyway, let's go ahead and do this. Of course, I did that. There we go. I even use this opportunity to pop a new battery in there. That is the wrong size. There we go. So on the previous iteration of the mod, uh, I had created a USB-C, USB Type-C cut jig uh, that I used to trim this shell. This shell was not designed for battery mods, unlike the uh, Funny Playing Laminated uh, shells, which quite frankly, if if you're to install this in any shell, the funny playing one would be the one to go with. Um, the laminated kit just looks better than what I had in here. I just I just wanted to check out the uh, extreme rate one at the time. Anyway, there it is. In this shell, I had to cut out the battery compartment too, which is what I don't want to do again. But here is the old version of the mod. You can see it is quite a bit smaller than the new one, which covers 
quite a bit more of the board. Oh, I didn't have to modify the front at all, so I could just leave this. That's convenient. I'll have to find a new front, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Let me go grab one. And hey, would you look at that? Taste notwithstanding, I found exactly what I was talking about. We got a uh, funny playing laminated shell and a perfectly working laminated kit. It is the uh, older one, so I will have to solder on a power wire, but that is a bridge to cross at another mo at another time. And uh, you're gonna see me install this without testing it. But trust me when I say I already tested it because it came out of a working Game Boy. Um, Yeah, that won't be too bad. <laughs> it's just for the video. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. So first thing we're going to need to go ahead and pull this off. I think the easy way is going to be to take some flush cutters and just cut flush a little bites there. Did I get them all? Yeah, there it goes. And don't need this. Just need a little pan. But now we can line this up and you can see exactly what needs to come out, which is quite a lot. So we are going to start with the battery terminals because that is the most pressing. I am going to use my vice here. Super convenient for this sort of stuff. And my soldering iron is already heated up. I am going to add a little bit more solder to both those pads. get my forceps here and I could have placed my vices better but should be good there we go and once that is heated up I'm gonna pull the Jesus thing out and the forceps are not because I need a force multiplier, but because these things just get really hot when you have the soldering iron to them. So I don't want to burn myself. Easy. Just like that. Next, we are going to need to remove the DC port which I am also going to cheat a little bit with because, you know, smoke them if you got them. Y'all have seen me use the solder sucker before and it works, but I've got, uh, I've got more tools. Uh, so this, for the uh, uninitiated, is a Hako FR301. Is that going to pick up? There it is. Uh, this was actually gifted to me um, Christmas last year and it has appeared in almost no videos because I have no room on it no room on my desk for it but I have used it quite frequently it's fantastic but anyway how it works we just wait for the Jesus thing to come up to temperature and oh no I don't have the right tip on it Oh, that one work. Wait for the wait for the iron to come up to temperature. Go ahead and drop it over the pin. Give it a few seconds to make sure it's nice and warm. And give it a suck while giving it a little jiggle, and that'll clear things out. Will this work anyway? I doubt it, but I'll try. It's a lot easier when you can just put the whole pin inside the, inside the tip. And I have another tip for this, but... Oops. I clearly 
haven't removed a DC jack with this yet. And then it just comes right out. Easy peasy. I'm going to save this because this is a perfectly good DC jack and I'm sure I'll find a use. Set that aside. Next up we're going to flip this over. This one I recapped. It is, how convenient. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna clean up my battery terminals. Ta da! It's like a solder sucker on steroids. Well, it is a solder su sucker on steroids. It's not like anything. Exactly what it is. All right, now we need to remove the DC DC board. should be good to go. Let me clean that off. Fantastic tool if you do a lot of desoldering. I know the price is pretty off-putting, but if you use it enough to justify the price, it is priceless. I don't, I don't think I'm quite there yet, but look how easy that is. Come on. back. And we're getting there. Still need to remove a few more things. See, I don't like... I wish he had designed this a little bit differently. Um, like, I appreciate that the LEDs are attached and wired up so that we can test this thing in advance. I don't know how you're supposed to test it in the uh, panel, but once you've gotten it removed from the panel, is that the right connector? It looks like the right connector, but it just, oh, there it goes. Just gotta give it a little push. We can plug this in and check it out, and you can see it's charging. It's not pulling that much power, or is it? If you can see that, it should show, show 3 watts. Uh, but one of the nice things is that this is a USB-C host cable, and you can see that, see, uh, you can see that it works with USB-C hosts. Uh, but that is pretty much the extent of the testing we can do without soldering it in. So let's keep going here. Just line this up and remove anything that looks like it gets in the way. Which is quite a bit. We need to remove this capacitor, that electromagnetic filter. I don't know why that needs to come out. That electromagnetic filter. Uh, we need to remove fuse two and both of those EM6 and EM7 filters and D2 diode. The easy way to do this is with hot air, but I'm going to use the soldering iron because I don't want to melt that or that or that capacitor. Does that one need to come out? I don't think that one needs to come out. All I'm doing is hitting both sides of the part with a big solder ball at the same time and then plucking it out with my tweezers. 
I'm saving the, them, though it's very likely that I will lose them before I even get the chance to reuse them. too bad. And I'll save all that for um, shenanigans or if I ever wanted to restore this or something. And I think we're good to go. Go ahead and get this cleaned up though. This is not a beginning soldering uh, project. If you're new to soldering, a solder practice kit is a much better idea than jumping straight into something like this. But more power to you, I guess, if you can. I don't know. Not a good idea, but I'm not your parent. Easy. I'm going to clean up all that flux. It's also probably a good idea to recap your Game Boy before doing something like this because getting in there afterwards is going to be much more difficult. Uh, these three caps on Game Boy Colors aren't exactly the most reliable from the factory. One of the reasons why I already did this one. And I do have a video on that, of course. If I remember, I'll link it in the description, but I probably won't, so sorry. Alright. Break that off. If I break, I think, I'm just going to use the flush cutters. just fits, surprisingly. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but here we are, I guess. Oh, I need to desolder the speaker. Totally forgot. kill for a speaker, but eh. Oh dear lord. I don't know how to clean that up. I think it's time for a new brass sponge. Alright, now it just fits. How convenient. I just wanted to suck all the solder out of that hole because it does not connect here and it needs to be nice and flat against the board if we want to have a nice install.
and I think we're good to go to install it. I don't know what else we need to do. I think that's it. I am going to start with tinning this side of the fuse. nice big solder ball in there and I am moving the board around to get it positioned and I think I got it pretty much lined up with everything so I think we're good to go got those two joints right there much it. We got that one, we gotta make that nice and through hole. I'll check and see that that soaked through in just a second. Do that one too. I'll come flip it over and see if there's solder in the holes. There is one there's solder in the top hole but not in the bottom hole so redo that. And it could be better. Maybe I'll get it from this side. There we go. That way it's nice and pretty looking, right? Got one more right here. Thing. We'll soak that again because it's not quite hit the other side. That's still not doing it. I wonder if it's a good idea to throw some header pins through these holes just so you know it's connected. Yeah, we'll hope for the best. I'm gonna touch up the fuse joint. And I got some solder. I flicked it and got a bunch of little bits of solder. That's it. I think we're good to go. Uh, next step is going to be to install the wiring for the LED, and of course I've neglected that, but we'll come back to it in just a second. We can try it out. Why don't we? Oh, that's not going to work, is it? We need to plug in an IPS kit. Once you pull this out of a Game Boy, you can't put stock screens in there anymore. Oh, is this a 2.6? No. Does it work anyway? Let's find out. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's okay. I 
How's the boot? That's way too long. Yeah, that'll be fine. Solder to common, I believe. Ooh, whoops. That's what I get for not cleaning off my iron. real quick <laughs> oh and I definitely should have unplugged the battery while I was doing that whoops but it seems to be working that was super dumb of me huh let's get sound working This time I'm unplugging it. How about that? There is polarity for the speaker pads, but I really don't think it matters since we're only installing one speaker. If this were a stereo mod, we would have to make sure that both speakers are installed in the same polarity. But it's not, so... makes the one sound unless there's a game in. Speaking of sound, I don't have any. I bet I'm missing something. There are one, two, three, four, five, six pads that I didn't solder. And this thing only has three. SDC Plus. Let me go look that up and see what that is. I'll be right back. Hey, so it turns out there was uh, documentation and instructions this whole time, and I didn't realize it. it in, in my defense, it's not out yet, okay? I didn't I didn't think to check the GitHub, but there are work in, in uh, work in progress instructions available. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So we can use this green wire here, but of course it is precisely twice as long as it needs to be. So I'm gonna not do that. I going to use this magnet wire. Nah, I don't think I'm going to use that either. Ah, oh, whoops. kind of forgot about that. I'm going to desolder that. 
and we'll just circle back to that. I don't want to kill it, so. Oh, I totally forgot. There are oops, two solder pads right here that we do want to solder. These aren't for electrical connection, but are literally just for mechanical, like added strength, um, because that's right where the port is. So this will help the board, this will help the mod be nice and sturdy and hopefully last longer. Can't really check and make sure that it's soldered down, but we'll hope for the best, I guess. Can I feed that under? No. That's a shame. You can feed it through there, though. Eh, I don't want to use that. I hate magnet wire. Alright, so we want to solder right to the middle pin on this potentiometer here. Drop that in there. back and feed that through. We want to make sure to leave enough slack. Ah, freaking speaker magnets, man. Driving me crazy. And then there's plenty of wire here. I'm going to heat up some of the slat. Nah, I can cut it short. I don't think there's any point in leaving that much slack. And this gets soldered to the S pad of these four right here. There's still plenty of slack because this is going to have to get moved over a few different times just to make sure everything clears. But now we've got one more thing and I do have to remove the power LED to uh, install it but we want to install the charge indicator and power indicator. So in this case, uh, nah, I'll leave that. There's a little bit of uh, PCB that still needs to be trimmed, but I'm going to leave that attached for the time being. First step is I need to remove the power LED, but that's the old uh, suck -o matic here. And it just pops right out. Easy. Love it. Oh, I'm dropping stuff. Game Boy pin. All right. So this thing we want to install just like that. And I have no idea what the easy way to install this is. Ooh, I just had a really good idea though. Clamp it in my vise. And flip it over. See if I can get in there. The vice is in the way. 
Ah, now we got it. And then if all goes well, we should be able to just power it up and I believe we'll get a white indicator now. Oh, wow, and that is super loud. I totally forgot that was plugged in. Whew, scared the crap out of me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Now, all we have left are these three wires, and I should have trimmed this beforehand. Hmm, where I pro for that, Jesus. gauge this is. Well, this is 30, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Alright, so the bundle of wires he gives you are multicolor, thankfully. Get all three of these tinned up. And I am going to do red for positive. No, I'm not, because these aren't tinned. I forgot to tin them. All right, let's try that again. Red for, well, green for D or done charging, black for charging, because I only get three colors, and then red for positive. Just like that. And I am going to Fold that. I believe it fits like this. You can just pop it in the shell. Let's double check. Yeah, that can go right there around the side of the board. You'll see it through a clear shell, but it is what it is. Once again, we've got way too much wire. Probably don't even need the wire cutters with how much the, um, or the strippers with how much the sheathing retreats as soon as you hit it with the soldering iron. I'm going to tin these up. And then I got to re-solder my speaker because <laughs> I got stuck on something and broke. I say red was positive. D is green. Easy. They're even in the same order. How convenient. And 
I almost turned the soldering iron off because I forgot that needs to be resoldered. This is example number one why you don't use solid core wire on something that you're going to be swinging around. Like a speaker, for example. Oh, and there goes the other one. Alright, we're finally there. I got a solder in the back light kit again too, but whatever. Let's get this thing installed. Ooh, it's even a brand new LCD. I thought for sure this was one one of the recycled ones. From the junk pile. And I don't recall if I mentioned this before, but this mod, um, the Giltessa one that is, not this backlight kit, it doesn't care what backlight kit you use, it just cares that you don't use an OEM screen. Uh, part of this board's job is to generate voltages that the OEM screen needs, and so if you have it removed, it can no longer generate those voltages. And the LED with the legs cut off gets dropped right into that hole there. And that adds some nice diffusion. And then we can just come in here and get this seated. Maybe. There we go. That's a little multicolor wire for friends. Yeah. Drop that in there, maybe. Oh, I really should have gotten uh, screws for this thing. Oh, oh well. I hope the OEM screws don't ruin anything. doesn't go there. Yeah, it does. Totally forgotten. Huh, that's fine. Make sure these are all tucked in, though. Probably helps if we plug in this kit, too, huh? We're all set. Speaker's gonna rattle a little bit because I don't think that's the right 
size speaker for this. Uh, I believe the funny playing ones should be good though. And go figure, I have a GBA one laying around. No GBC. Luckily, the alignment's the same on that. That's convenient. Still not fitting, though. I think I might have to make a uh, custom shell. Darn, I tried to make my life easier. This won't go on. I think the alignment is ever so slightly different between the two. That or you just can't mix and match these shells. Let me uh, fuss with it and then I'll get this reassembled. All right, so it did fit. It just required quite a bit of elbow grease to uh, get everything lined up. I really don't recommend mixing and matching funny playing and extreme rate shells. I don't know which one isn't the one uh, that is fitting properly, because uh, clearly these both can't be designed around OEM uh, measurements if they don't fit together. Um, but I really don't recommend it. You can see how it's fitting down here and there's not a lot I can do about that. I think it's not seated around the board, but I don't know that there's much I can do about that. So after the video, I'm gonna swap this out. But anyway, good enough for now. I did have to reroute the speaker wire. I actually put it on the side with the other bundle of wires just to make sure that there was plenty of clearance. Uh, and I did put in that third screw hole because I'm not using a funny playing rear, so it doesn't matter. Um, otherwise, we're good to go. Just need to get this plugged in. There you go. There's no need to cut out any of the battery compartment from what I've already cut at least. If this were a funny playing shell, there would be no cuts necessary for the battery compartment, aside from the cuts you need for the USB-C port. But otherwise, that just goes in there just like that. Ha! Oh, that is absurdly loud. It's, uh, it's certainly an amp. I am personally not a fan of amps. I, when I actually play Game Boys, it's almost always with the sound off. And the off chance I do play with the sound on, it's gonna be very low. Never been a, never been an amp person, uh, but that certainly is, uh, Amplified. One of my problems with amps, and I don't know if there is something getting lost in communication or or what, but amps amplify things. Like that that much is obvious. That's how amps work. That's what amps do. Sorry, I'm putting wires away, making a mess. Um, which means if your Game Boy Color is making a lot of buzzing and, and hissing noises or something of that nature, when you put an amp in, that's just going to be louder. All it does is make everything louder. Uh, so if you're really sensitive to that and you put an amp in, it's just going to amplify that noise. Uh, but otherwise, 
You know, I mean, the voltage regulator seems to do its job. I'd have to put this thing through its paces, really, to see... to see if it really affects anything, and that's not something I can do in a quick, quote-unquote, video. But otherwise, it seems pretty good. I don't think play and charge is supported, but if we plug that in, you can see the red LED. It's not... Not quite as bright as I had hoped, but I do also have a lot of lights on at my desk. So let me let me kill those actually. I bet it'll be nice and bright. Ta-da! Plenty bright now. Uh, so it is red while it is charging. I believe blue when it's complete. Don't quote me on that. And then white while it's on. I think it's pretty neat. I dig it. The uh, only problem is, like I said, there's there's quite a lot of soldering to do in here, so it's not a beginner-friendly mod. Uh, there's also quite a bit of trimming you need to do for the um, for the USB-C port, and there is a uh, there's two LEDs, so there's one down by the charge port itself, and then there's that mod so you don't actually have to install that portion because you'll still get the red LED back here and then whatever color charge complete is uh, which I thought was blue but could be green don't quote me um, and then you just use your normal power LED but it's nice that you have the option right uh, the previous iteration of this mod did not have the second LED uh oh oh there it goes so yeah, I have, well this one uses green, uh, but there's no other, no other um, LEDs on that board. I like that, that's a nice addition, and it shouldn't raise the cost on this sort of stuff too much because that's, LEDs are stupid cheap, especially in bulk. Uh, but yeah, man, this is, this is pretty neat. Uh, one weird thing uh, like I mentioned earlier because it does replace this DC regulator you can't use this with an OEM screen though chances are if you're the type looking at a mod like this you wouldn't want to use it with an OEM screen anyway so it's probably not an issue but you know it, it's it's worth keeping in mind um, aesthetically if you were to install this in a clear shell well, your Game Boy Color is going to look kind of funny because the voltage regulation is going to be on the back instead of on the front, and there's just this empty white square there, and if you have one of the Cloud Game Store shells, you'll be able to see that text no problem, but this is a funny playing shell. So there's no text visible. Uh, and of course I don't have one of the Cloud Game Store ones handy. Oh yeah, well, it's not a Game Boy Color, but... You can see how transparent those are. Same thing. Just not Game Boy. Anyway. So yeah, amp amps. The boost regulator boosts and the battery charger charges. Uh, as far as performance goes, I, I have no concerns. I have no issues. Uh, the only thing, and I have not studied the schematic, so do not quote me on this, but I'm fairly certain there is no load switching. Um, and you know what, before I have to go eat my words, let me, let me look at the schematic. So in review of the schematic, I don't see anything in there that handles load switching. Uh, it looks like Giltessa has switched over from the TP4056 to the TP5000 charger, which my understanding is better charger. Uh, but it doesn't include any load switching either. It's just a battery charging IC. Uh, so if you want to have load switching, that needs to be added on top. Um, the components, it is a relatively simple circuit, but uh, it, it's not necessary per se. Um, the only reason you might want it is if your game is on and your battery starts running low, which... I don't know that there is any low voltage indication with this. Um, probably no low battery warning. Uh, that's might be something to look into for an updated iter 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 iteration. Good lord. Uh, but let's say your battery is running low. 
and you're another 10 minutes away from a safe spot, you can't plug it in. You cannot charge a lithium ion battery and have a uh, current drain on it at the same time. It doesn't work. I mean, it kind of works. Uh, it'll work until it doesn't, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's not worth the risk. So, when you're done charging, or when you're done playing, rather, just plug it in and let it charge. Lithium-ion batteries don't have a uh, memory, per se, so there's basically nothing wrong with playing it, charging it, playing it, charging it, playing it, charging it, even if you're only playing it for like an hour. Granted, uh, batteries... Uh, for long-term health, it is best to keep them between, you know, higher than 20% charge and lower than 80% charge for long-term health. Um, it does put a little bit more wear on the battery charging from 80 to 100% than it would charging from 60 to 80%, even though those are approximately the same capacities. Uh, but it, it's the same wear you'd be putting on the battery from 0 to 100% more or less. Uh, so it's not too big a deal. Um, I haven't checked the low voltage cutoff, but I sincerely doubt there is one. I didn't see anything in the schematic. So likely this just keeps running until whatever voltage regulator hits its low voltage cutoff. I suppose I can look that up too. One moment. All right. So this thing uses the MT3540, um, voltage regulator from Aero Semi. It's not something I'm familiar with. It's not something I've used, but the data sheet is pretty easy to find. And right up top, it says it supports an input from 2.5 volts to 5 volts, which means if you drain this thing to empty, it's going to bring the battery down to 2.5 volts. That's not okay. Uh, I don't ever recommend playing with this mod until it shuts off on its own. You will have brought your battery down uh, well past what is widely considered the safe range. If you charge your battery immediately, there is probably no danger, but all lithium ion batteries have an inherent self discharge. So the longer you wait to recharge it at that state, the more damage it's going to do to itself. Uh, that is why, that is one of the reasons why low voltage cutoffs with lithium ion batteries for something like a Game Boy Advance SP is so high at 3.4 volts. There's not much capacity between 2.5 and 3.4 volts. Um, in a battery like this, 1500 milliamp hours, there's maybe 100 milliamp hours in that range. You're not missing out on much at all. Uh, so that low of a low voltage cutoff, I think is going to cause damage long term. So I stand by uh, what I initially said, you know, it just charge it after you're done playing, even if you only played for an hour or two. Uh, I have no idea what kind of battery life we can expect out of this thing, but I'd wager probably six to eight hours on an IPS kit and probably with a flash cart. Uh, maybe more depending on what your brightness is at uh, and depending on which specific kit. I know the newer laminated funny playing kits are actually a little bit better on battery life than the specific one I have in here, uh, specifically because they are lower brightness unless you solder up that power wire. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's not great. There's definitely room for improvement, but as long as you're aware of those caveats, I think it's perfectly fine. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great actually. Uh, but like I said, there's still no load switching, which means you cannot play and charge at the same time. There is no low, low battery warning, which means when it's dead, it's dead. It's just pumping out a constant 3.5 volts, or excuse me, 5 volts to the console. The battery light, I believe, should still be hooked up to the battery voltage, which means you should notice it getting dimmer. But a lithium ion battery voltage is still going to be a lot higher than alkaline, so it's not going to be nearly as noticeable as it dims. Um, you know, get an idea for the brightness at a relatively charged battery and then drain it down and you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's, it is there, but it's not great. Uh, that doesn't support plain charge, but it'll charge anyway. So yeah, I don't recommend doing that. Um, 
So what I say, we have no play in charge, no simultaneous play in charge, no low battery warning. Uh, there's no low voltage cutoff either, so definitely don't run this thing dry. Um, otherwise, that's it. Those are really my only complaints. Uh, Giltessa has done a fantastic job getting this thing to fit. Like I said, there, there's quite a bit of soldering involved, so it's not necessarily a beginner level mod, but uh, with the voltage regulator, it means you can cut this bad boy out of there. Um, hopefully the efficiency is a little bit better with something like this. It's kind of hard to measure efficiency because every console is going to be different. Every mod is going to be different. Every backlight kit, every single game is going to be different. And efficiency is going to change at load levels. So it's, it's really hard to measure. Um, I don't know that anyone has ever measured that, and I personally don't really know how to measure it, aside from uh, swapping out the 5 volt regulator with this thing again, and then just seeing what lasts longer. You know, this this regulator or that regulator on the same battery and charge you know, That's really the only way I can think to test that. Um, but it's probably about the same. These things... These, these parts were probably super expensive back in the day. I would not be surprised if Nintendo paid 10 to $20 per unit of these things. Uh, there's not, you know, you, you look at it, it looks pretty simple, but this is basically a switching voltage regulator, but all discrete components because these all-in-one ICs these all-in-one ICs that are on modern components and stuff didn't really exist back then. I'm sorry, I said this is a switching voltage regulator. I really don't think it is, but I don't know enough about it to speculate, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, but either way, these were, these were top spec in the day. Nintendo did not mess around when it came to power, but of course, as needs change, you know, this was designed to run a stock Game Boy. This is very far from a stock Game Boy with this IPS kit, and that's not a flash cart, but flash cart will increase demand, or will increase the load, which in theory would decrease the efficiency of a guy like this. So hopefully this will be better with an IPS kit. Unfortunately, I can't measure it, not easily, and I don't plan on measuring it either. I'll leave that for uh, other enterprising individuals if someone wants to give it a go. But the amp is the amp. The amp is fine. Voltage regulator is fine. It's just the battery charger portion that I still think needs a little bit of work. All right. Um, I guess that's all I've got. I want to go ahead and wrap this up now. I mentioned earlier that the battery probably comes with one of these things if you order from Retro Game Repair Shop. Don't quote me on that, but it definitely does not come with one of these battery mods if you order straight from Giltessa. You have to track a battery down separately. 103048 fits nicely, but they're only about 1500 milliamp capacity, milliamp hour capacity. Uh, if you carve out even more of the battery compartment, or if you use one of the funny playing shells that actually just has more room, you can probably cram in a slightly larger battery, but there's not that much room in there. Uh, if you cut out the entire battery compartment, I think you can fit up to a 2000 milliamp hour battery. So that's an option if you want to go that route. But I don't know, diminishing returns. Realistically, how often are you playing your Game Boy? Uh, it's something that a lot of people don't consider when they look at battery mods like this. Um, they they just look at the number and go, oh wow, it only gets six hours of battery life. That's that's horrible. What if I what if I'm on a plane and I want to play for more than six hours? Well, A, how often are you on a plane? B, how often are you actually playing for six hours or more? C, planes have charge ports these days. At least all the ones I've been on have. Um, but when I sit down and play games on a Game Boy, I'm usually only playing for an hour or two at a time. That is more than enough. And with something like this, where you can just charge it when you're done playing, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter that it doesn't get as long battery life in a single session, because I personally don't sit down and play Game Boy for that long. Generally, if I 
have that much time on my hands, you know, I can I can whip out something a little bit bigger, like. Eh? Game Boy, I think, is, is good for, for short bursts. And uh, I think this battery mod will pair well for that. But as always, if you want to get the, you know, if you want to min-max your battery life, Ikea Lada is pretty hard to beat. Of course, I don't have them on my desk. They're all sitting in the charger. Well, there's some of these. Um, I don't recommend these specific batteries, but nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries have come a long way and they're dirt cheap. Uh, the Ikea lot of batteries that I usually recommend, a four pack is like eight bucks or something and they're almost 2,600 milliamp hours. Um, they're insane. These things were like the same price and they measured lower than 2,200 milliamp hours, so that's why I don't recommend them. They're not bad. It's just the Ikea ones are better and for the same price, you know, it'd be silly to get the worst way, you know what I mean? Anyway. Um, all right, I think that's all I've got. I'm gonna, no, one more thing. One more thing, he always does this. Gosh darn you, Mako. Um, in the other video I did with the extreme rate shell and the older version of the mod, the alignment is the same, by the way. Uh, I used a jig to cut out the shell, which is why I didn't want to have to do that again. I don't know where that jig is. I'll have to print another one. Um, but there are a few few more tweaks I want to make to it, and then I'll go ahead and publish it, and then you can just download the STL and print it on your machine, ask a friend to print it on their machine, or even if you really want to order prints from someone like PCBWay or JLCPCB or uh, Shapeways or any of the dozens of um, shops out there for this stuff. They're pretty cheap, but it's really only convenient if you have a 3D printer. Uh, but like I said, there's a little bit more tweaking I wanna do before I publish that, and then I will go ahead and get that published. And as soon as it's published, I will have a link down in the description, uh, but that might not be by the time this video goes up, so keep that in mind. Um, at this point though, I think I've hit everything I wanted to cover. So I will end the video here. I will let you all get back to it. Thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to check out. Um, they usually get a lot of these mods in and send them my way for my opinion or uh, to help out with some instructions. You know, he scratches my back, I scratch their back. It's a mutually beneficial arrangement. Um, this is my my opinion on this. I'm not getting paid to, to try and sell this stuff or or whatever. I I think it's pretty neat. And um, yeah, I'll go ahead and throw a link down in the description if you want to check one out for yourself. Just like I said, keep in mind those caveats because no play in charge, no low voltage cutoff. Both of those things, if you do not keep them in mind, you know, if, if you don't if you know that the machine is not going to protect you from yourself, you can still protect you from yourself and everything will work out fine. But if you don't know that and you mistreat it, lithium ion batteries do not handle mistreatment well. Look up the Galaxy Note 7 if you don't believe me. Uh, otherwise, it's finally, it's finally that time. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you all next time.